All right, time being uh, six o'clock, I will call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Wanda? Here. Don? Here. Joe? Here. Dan? Here. Sherry? Here. Item number three, does any commissioner have a reason to abstain for a financial or a non-financial conflict of interest? Clinch, no. 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 I would just like to put on the record for future um, opportunities, in the event that a Harmelink and Fox claim comes up, I do not wish to participate in that particular vote. I will vote on the rest of it and abstain from that portion. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there a way, Deb or Patty, is there a way we could just have that somewhere and just have it either in the uh, agenda or on that particular claim, I, just as a standard I can conflict just, of interest? You can, so will, she doesn't have to do it. You can pull just that one like wherever, whichever one it shows up, right? And then that one can be listed separately instead of. So have two different so, motions? Yeah. Okay. And so whichever one, whichever sheet has that claim on it, that would just be a separate vote. item to vote on. And okay. then she can have the same from that. All right, thank you. I do not have a conflict. Uh, item number four is approval of the agenda. Are there any uh, corrections to the agenda? There being no cor corrections, I uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Healy, second by Fox, to approve the agenda as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Agenda is approved. Now is the time for public comment. Would anyone care to make a public comment? Please state your name for the record. Louis Johnson, Ballin, South Dakota. I have a question that has been on my mind for quite a while. Can Yankton County afford zoning? And I guess where I'm coming from is I see the permits being issued. I see the rules being followed. And I see lawsuit upon lawsuit upon lawsuit. Uh, and it's, and I know from personal experience about the lawsuit. When the smoke cleared and the judge ruled, you did nothing wrong. You followed the rules, you did it like you were supposed to. But I think it's costing the county way more money than what they're getting out of it. And we may have to look into something totally different because some areas it appears that we can't fine tune enough. And then other areas, well, whatever you want to do works. And Case in point, when there were producers that were putting up hog barns, I can remember having lengthy discussions about what kind of lights are gonna be on the outside of it. Oh, will it distract drivers? Will it cause accidents? And then I drive by people's places where they have three yard lights, they have no livestock, and they've got about 2,000 Christmas lights. But that's okay. Or you can go out to the lake, and I believe there's one house out there that has close to 100 soffit lights. Because I visited with one of the neighbors across the way, and he made the comment that it looked like a damn circus tent. But that's okay. But yet, if it's for a farmer or a livestock producer, oh, those yard lights are terrible. And I guess, I don't see why we gotta keep passing more and more regulations to make it harder and harder and harder 
and open the county up to more and more and more lawsuits. And I personally would love to see the total on what the county has spent on lawsuits and lost. Thank you. Any other public comments? Come on up, sir. Please state your name for the auditor. Uh, my name is Ryan Heine, and I am here to say that I actually now find, found this uh, very elusive uh, conditional use permit from 2018 for my neighbor who has built a park completely off from the site plan he provided. He was required to have uh, As the, as this direct, as I directly quote this, proper screening is provided in the site plan and must be implemented before operation begins. And he has zero screening, and he has had zero screening for years. Um, septic system must be met must have DNR requirements and electrical hookups. I am very suspicious since he has a septic tank. It looks like a septic tank that's in the right of way for Alphonse Road literally right next to a ditch. Um, additionally, he just built a building that is in the right of way for Alphonse Road with no variance. It was just a straight building permit given to him this, uh, this past year in 2020. Um, and far as I know, the lakeside zoning requires a 75 foot setback for this building, but there's been no variance uh, or anything granted. He was just given a building permit and he went on his way. Um, we've had m numerous problems with this park and all I've ever asked was for him to contribute to the road costs. Um, we, he rejected that yet another, um, road agreement as of right now, he has no road agreements for any of his future parks, nor this one. Um, I'm at, I'm at the point where I'm fighting for my farm. Uh, I'm, I can't can't keep operating my business like this. Um, the insurance company won't give me any reasonable quotes for liability insurance anymore since his people take free or grain liberty of my property. So I, I don't know where I'm gonna go after this because I'm just running out of options, but that's where I'm at. I brought, the, I brought copies of this over, over because in the past meetings, this seemingly was lost, so. If you want some copies of it. <laughs> Thank you. Don, can we get a copy to Gary and just have Gary email them all to us and that way it won't get lost? Yeah, because <coughs> that's just like my fingers did. <laughs> get them separated. Any other public comments at this time? Public comment is now closed. Sure. Um, I don't have a public comment, but I'd just like to take a moment and recognize uh, Mr. Chuck Hafner. He was our veteran service officer for 29 years. Uh, helped a lot of veterans in this community and uh, he recently passed away. So hope we give uh, thoughts and prayers to him and his family. And uh, additionally, our groundskeeper, Jeff, um, is going through some tough times. So. Uh, just hope we keep him and his family in our thoughts at this time. So. Thank you. Yep. Item five, approval of minutes from January 5th of 2021. Are there any corrections to the minutes? If not, I entertain a motion to approve the minutes for January 5th. So moved. Second. Second. I have a motion by Healy, second by Fox, to approve the January 5th, 2021 minutes for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries five zero minutes are approved. So at this time, I'm gonna hand the meeting back over to our auditor. At this time, I will call for nominations for chairperson for 2021. I nominate Sherry Lewis. I would second. Approve nomination sees cast unanimous ballot. 
Second on that. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, now I will have a motion um, to not for um, vice chair. I nominate Joe Healy. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right, thank you. So we do nomination C's first? Um, I think that's fine. Okay. That's what Got it. I have, so. Okay, thank you. So at this time we need to go into uh, Board of Adjustment. So I need a motion to enter Board of Adjustment. I would move to go into Board of Adjustment. Second. I have a motion by Fox, second by Healy to go into Board of Adjustment for the discussion. Um, Madam Chair, Board of Adjustment scheduled for 6.20 and at 6.10. I know they're pretty particular on that. So are we gonna, cause it is a hearing. And to go through it and then somebody shows okay. up at 620 and they say, well, I do Yeah, Dan, you're right. So I. We can delay that so then. Um, I'd make a motion. Do you think it matters? Because it's just, they're just doing motions. I know. I would still, I would still wait for this. Okay. I think we can go ahead and do some of your um, other stuff. Let's do the flames. So we had a motion in a second to go into Board of Adjustment. Uh, um, why don't we just uh, rescind the motion? And is it all right if we just go ahead and rescind your motion then, Wanda? Did I do. You? Okay, so that motion is rescinded and we will skip down to item number nine. We can go ahead and look at the claims. Wanda rescinded her motion because we never voted on it. Okay. So are there any questions on the claims? I'd move approval. Second. I have a motion by Healy, a second by Kettering to approve the claims as submitted for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> All opposed nay. Motion carries five zero, claims are approved. At this time, we have the auditor treasurer report and pooled cash report together. Move. Move approval. Second. I have a motion by Healy, second by Kettering to approve the auditor treasurer and pooled cash reports. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5 0. Approved salaries. Did Karen print those out? No. I don't have anything in the packet on those. I want to get just this. So there were there were a lot of discussions uh, with department heads. Um, Joe assisted on some of the conversations at where to put every salaried employee into the matrix. So what is being proposed is a one and a half percent raise for everyone uh, beginning in January. And that is essentially CPI. Um, I think the state minimum wage CPI was 1.3%. So we are doing a 1.5% across the board CPI. Um, those employees who are eligible for steps, um, some are eligible in January, so they would go ahead and receive their step increase in January. Um, the balance of them will be February thereafter. Um, so every employee will start with one salary and then be eligible for a step on essentially the anniversary date of their position. And so Patty's going to print those off. Have we calculated how the, the potential increase in, in the salary matrix is gonna affect our budget? 
Yep, um, the, the ballpark we had budgeted for two and a half percent. I believe that if you look at by the end of December, we will be about at that two and a half percent for the county, but some departments will see more of it than others. So some departments are at risk for actually going over budget for what they originally budgeted. Um, so we might have to supplement certain departments and other departments we will not. So this, this raise is, is separate from the step raise that a lot of these. So you, you yep, you've got a column. The first column of numbers shows the 1.5%. So beginning in January, that will be their salary. The second will be their salary on their anniversary date. Um, some folks have a January anniversary date. So we're going ahead and giving their step in January. And so off to the side, you can see there's a note, that's a January step increase. Um, for example, I'm gonna pick on the elected officials because they took office in January. So our elected officials, um, for the most part, have their steps in January. And there's a few other folks who are in that case, or in that situation. And, the bulk of the department heads, I did or Joe and I together sat down with them and went through these. Others we did via email. I don't think a lot changed from what was identified in the step in the matrix. There were some, um, you know, after the matrix was was approved and then placing people in their steps was really the the goal and i don't know that there was a lot of movement from what we kind of budgeted or what we figured is this something that has to be voted on tonight i guess the reason is a you know i just got it i like to look through things it, over if it's got to be voted on tonight that's fine but it really does because karen yes. has to get all these new figures in and so, payrolls next week sure. really the, really the biggest thing i to me that like i said most of the things really didn't change um the one and a half is probably what the you know the cpi would probably be the biggest thing yeah, because I think everybody on their budget said 2.5. Yep. So we're, we're doing a one and a half percent across the board, every employee? Every employee. Yeah. Because there are some employees who won't get a step increase because they're ahead of where they should be. Um, and we felt it wasn't, wasn't in the best interest of the county to give them nothing. And then the one and a half percent will apply to the part-time folks as well. And it applies to us. That's what we're getting, the commissioners. And in, a motion is made that will have to be stated in there for county employees and commissioners. Okay. Over the sake of getting it to discussion I'll make a motion and we approve I have a motion to approve um, what's in front of us uh, including the one and a half percent for the commissioners second so motion by Kettering second by Healy to approve the pay scale adjustments presented including commissioners further discussion All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Mental illness quarterly reports. I believe there's a printout in front of you for uh, December. She didn't have, Karen didn't have that in there, but she had finished it today. So. Oh, okay. So there's one, two in the packet and one in front of you for December.
Deb, are the rates for the mental illness hearings, are those uh, set in codified law or are those up to us to? Okay, got it. I didn't, I saw we were raising the rates for the jail and I didn't know if we could do that or not, but it sounds like they're set, which was fair. Thank you. To entertain a motion to approve the mental illness hearing uh, income by customer summaries. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Healy, second by Clemish to approve the mental illness hearing uh, summaries. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. And we are finished with item nine and we are at 620. So now we can go back to do our board of adjustment. Entertain a motion to go into board of adjustment. And I would make a motion to go into board of adjustment. Second. I have a motion by Fox, second by Healy to go into board of adjustment for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. We are now at board of adjustment. Time being 6-20. Item number seven is the Brad King variance in Platt. Uh, we heard this at our last meeting. It is the reason we're redoing this was, was because of the reorganization? Because of the procedural error. We just wanted to make sure that our votes um, were accurately I, recorded. I, I understand that totally. My question is, were these we're, we're, we're acting as if this is the actual Board of Adjustment hearing now, correct? So was this advertised in? Yeah. Okay, got it. It was advertised in the newspaper. Okay, got it. So we should go ahead and take public comment again. At this time, would anyone care to make a public comment on this application? There being no public comment, public comment is closed. Unless there's further discussion by the board, I would entertain a motion to approve the variance. I would move to approve the variance with the condition that we placed on it last meeting, which was that it not be sold separately. I'll we'll second that motion. I have a motion by Fox, second by Clemish, to approve the variance based on the conditions uh, previously stated on January 5th. Further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Wanda? Approve. Dan? Yes. Don? Yeah. Yes. Don? Approve. Joe? Yes. Sherry? Yes. So variance passes 5 0. We now have a plat that we need to uh, approve as well. I move approval of the plat. Second. second. So I have a motion by Kettering, second by Healy to approve the plat for Brad. King, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Item number seven is closed. Moving on to item number eight, the Phil Spady Holdings Incorporated Conditional Use Permit. At this time, would anyone care to make a public comment? There being no comments, public comment is closed. Discussion by the board. Approve approval. Were there any conditions on this I'm, one? I'm double check. I don't think so, but no. I'm going to double check. No. Okay. No second. So I have a motion by Clemish, a second by Healy to approve the conditional use permit for Phil Spady Holdings. Further discussion. Roll call vote. Dan? Yes. Joe? Yes. Wanda? Yes. Don? Yes. Sherry? Yes. Conditional use approved. So at this time, and entertain a motion to go back into regular session. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Kettering, second by Healy to go back into regular session. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. We are now back in regular session and at item number 10, which is the Wi-Fi upgrade quote. Oh, we want welfare. welfare report. 
You still have oh. The, yep, you still have the wel welfare quarterly. Oh. Too fast. You guys have got to catch me on these things <laughs> when I go too quickly. We were well, off shoot. To the races. I was. Well, let's go to that welfare quarterly report then. My apologies for that. I'd move approval. Second. I have a motion by Healy, second by Kettering to approve the welfare quarterly reports for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. The quarterly report is approved. We are now at item number 10. Thank you. Go ahead and come on up. Hi, I'm Craig Miller. Good evening. As you've probably seen the proposal with the three options on it, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of explanation and then if you have questions, you can ask them. So our current Wi-Fi system was installed in 2013. It was actually part of a grant and uh, it is a fourth generation Wi-Fi. Uh, this proposal that we're looking at is a fifth generation and just for your information, the sixth generation is out there. It's just not uh, totally implemented yet. Probably looking at several years in that regards. So in that light, um, the proposals that I have, I think that I would recommend the first option, which is to use our current controller. So we do not have to replace that. And we simply replace the access points uh, that'll make the configuration easier, and that's why the installation is a little less. The reason, one of the reasons I feel that would be a good idea is because, like I say, the fifth generation is coming to an end soon. I wouldn't want to spend a lot of money on the current generation when the sixth generation is coming up. Probably in two to three years, you'd want to do that. So that is my recommendation. Are there any questions? Now, just so everybody. Um, I asked Craig to come in here to explain this, and it's nice that your recommendation is also the cheapest one. So that's, that's, that's nice to hear. As a reference, um, right now, for instance, my connection in this room is about 140 as far as speed is concerned. And um, as you can see, these recommendations here, we're looking at 1,300, 800, 1,700 versus 130. So there is a difference. These are theoretical speeds, obviously. I think the theoretical speed for this is 150. Mm -hmm. So um, can't always get theoretical, but uh, definitely will be an improvement if we upgrade the to the uh, Gen 5. And the more users on that, the slower the speeds. That's true. There's still only one pipe. Um, so the more users at one time, but we are seeing more use of streaming things and that's where we're noticing uh, where we're inadequate. Um, for regular browsing, uh, the commissioners, you know, pulling up your packets, that won't stress this current system, but we're going to be seeing more and more usage. And, and Craig, we could put a passcode on that so it's just employees that use it as well correct or is that what you'd recommend or would you recommend that? Yes, there are passwords on, on the wireless. There's an internal one mm -hmm. and a public one mm -hmm. and they each have a different password. Any other questions? What's different between this and the uh, wireless router I go get at Walmart? And what mm -hmm. rooms will this cover? Good question. Um, the wireless that we installed in 2013 uh, primarily was in this building. There are seven access points in this building covering all floors. There is an access point at the extension office. There is an access point at the highway department and one at the state's attorney's office. Uh, the emergency management office also had actually three access points, but uh, due to their increased use of Wi-Fi this last year. They had to upgrade. They actually did option number three. They're actually running their phones, their desk phones, and a lot of things through the Wi-Fi. So it was really important for them to get as much speed as possible. Um, 
so the difference in this is it's uh, it's a uh, commercial system that can be controlled through a central all the access points can be tr controlled from one location and um, and do sophisticated security and things of that nature. What brought this on is Don and I, uh, our Zoom meeting we had that was, it was barely even working. Uh, and so we realized, especially with all the technology we rely on, we gotta, we gotta stay moving. And seven years is a, a long time yep. to have uh, that Wi-Fi, which changes about every three years, so. Any other questions? I'll move approval of option one. I'll second that motion. I have a motion by Kettering, second by Clemish to approve option number one for $1,500. And then 750 for the install. Okay. Further discussion. Do you have an estimated completion time, please? Um, I do not, but I would say within two to three weeks for sure. Okay. Thank you. If personally, I'd just wait till Jim six comes out. We haven't experienced. We've had one issue. But you said Gen 6 might be two to three years? Yeah. Do you think Gen 6 will be more expensive option? No, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. the, pri the price, incoming price point is about mm -hmm. the same. Yes, my, he's our IT specialist and I gotta defer to what his recommendation is. One thing we could do is the commission chamber could be upgraded with a single access point. We could try it, see how that works at a minimal cost. And then if it's uh, adequate, we could roll out to the others. So I try to be more open to that myself. This is probably where the most usage is i mean a lot of the offices are going to be they're hardwired it's essentially the desktop computers and whatnot are a lot of executive sessions we do upstairs in gary's room though or you know that's where we have the issue at so i guess it's and there there are more laptops in use than there were seven right. years ago yeah. as well that's but, part of it Further discussion? So at this moment, we have a motion to approve option number one for a total of 2250. All right, I'll call for um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay? Nay. Motion carries 4-1. Thank all right, sir. Thank you. you. Guys, I know Craig doesn't get in front of us all that often. Um, you guys any, have any questions? We're going to be doing some cyber security mm -hmm. training again, probably in the next six months. And anything yeah. else? We'll yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you. All right. Thanks, Craig. Item number 11, the nurse quarterly report. Good evening. I'm here to present the quarterly report for our office. Um, and then also on the end of it, there is a biannual stat analysis for you to review. Any questions on the report? Looks like most of your traffic remained pretty steady aside from flu shots. Yeah, it, um, as far as compared to last quarter, it's comparable. Um, yeah, and then I did look at, I was just curious if our flu shots were about the same as last year at this time, and they were, or I think it was 109 versus 105. Um, 
So that was interesting because I thought our numbers felt like our numbers went down. We had an extra clinic though. So. They hired the new person in that office yet? Not quite yet. Um, we had our closing date last week. So okay. Are you getting some applications for that? Yeah, we, uh, we got a nice round of applications. Oh, so looks good, looks promising. Excellent. Our office is returning back to regular services towards the end of in the next couple of weeks, which is really nice. Uh, I've been doing COVID surge for the last 10 months, so it will be interesting to get back into our routine. Um, phone services will continue for majority of services. WIC has extended their waiver out through May, um, so that will be to be ter determined, I guess. But the big uh, focus, I think, for our office will be returning back to some continuity as far as our clients and services. So, Any other questions? Entertain a motion to approve the reports. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Healy, second by Fox, to approve the nurse quarterly reports. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Steve. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Um, well, first, before I get to get started, I just want to say that, is this working? Yes. Testing, yep. testing. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, just want to say that <clears throat> 2020 was a huge challenge for all first responders um, throughout the nation, but, and, and that did it, um, and, and especially here in Yankton County. Um, starting in about, um, um, the year started off normal as we moved into the spring, into the late winter, early spring. We saw a call volume drop, which was kind of typical for EMS around the county or around the country, um, <clears throat> which the experts kind of predicted, but I couldn't under, I've yet to figure out why, other than we kind of locked down and nobody was moving and going anywhere. Then as our summer uh, came along, we started getting our summer volume started to come back. Um, and then we had the, the COVID surge and that kept everybody really busy. There for a while, we're about halfway through the year, we're about 50 calls behind. And we um, ended, ended the year with only 15 calls behind. So we really, they, the folks really made, a, really moved uh, the calls really, we got really busy. Well, Steve was 29, or 2019 was that your record year then, or was that? Yeah, 2019 okay, so, was so the record year. Was so basically this, so close we're, to yeah. Being so um, being 15 yeah. off the record year is still pretty darn high, yeah. I think. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, um, anyhow, we ended up with with uh, with uh, now I lost weight. Um, ended up with 2,093 calls for the year. Um, we uh, the. We had a, a, a pretty high expenditure uh, budget-wise this year, but we end up with forty-five hundred dollars with the grants. One of the things you have to remember is all that grant, all the money that we spent on the supplies we got for the grant doesn't necessarily go back into the budget. So, but I just kind of added that in there, and so we only ended up spending well, only we still spent quite a bit of money at a thousand or. Um, one point, what is that, six million, something like that, one point? One point zero six. One point zero six million, um, which when you look at 2019s, we're not that far off, really close. So um, we ended up collecting about 70% of our budgetary expenditures. Um, and then we gave back uh, almost 96,000 um, plus the 45,000, if you will, in grant money, um, which was kind of pretty close to last year. So then and you kind I, of come, oops. I'm just gonna yes, clarify, sir. that grant money was actually separate than the CARES Act money we got from the state. Yes, it that was, was yes, yes. So, so you so had to I, use yeah, that, and just, then yeah. you used the other stuff next, so. Just for clarification, yeah. I wrote this down because I knew that I might do. 
the grant money was $45,339. $25,000 of that was given to us by in CARES, it was the CARES One for healthcare providers to help supplement for the upcoming PPE, the low income uh, from, from um, the lack of ambulance calls. And then we did get $11,000 in change for uh, radios from Homeland Security Grant. We got $5,400 from TransCanada uh, for MCI Supply Grant. Um, and then we uh, have a $3,300 DOL um, uh, grant that, that helped put some uh, providers through paramedic school. That, that kind of goes up to that $45,000 thing there. So yes, it is, was totally different than the CARES money that the county was given um, through, I don't know what- Through the state. CARES Act yeah. that was, yeah. Okay, so um, kind of flipping over to the monthly breakdown of all the different calls, um, or all the different numbers, <clears throat> we ended up, um, at a $16.05 per resident cost um, to run the, the ambulance service. I did not figure back in the $4,500, you know, $45,000 um, grant money, that type of thing, but uh, $16, $16 um, is still not a tank of gas, I guess. Um, see, I don't know what else really to point out here. You guys can kind of look at the, at the numbers and, and if you have questions, um, please please ask. I don't want to just ramble. Yes, sir. I can see. I, I know Don's look. Okay. I, I just <laughs> want to ask: Have you set up plans for tomorrow? <laughs> no. No, we did not. I had to take for a minute to think what tomorrow was. So. Um, I'm reading here in your department description, it talks about, yeah, we, communities in Yankton as well as South Yankton. Is that in your mission statement that we provide ambulance assistance to South Yankton? I know we do that, but it's yeah. that. You know what's really funny about uh, it is I, I completely forgot to, to show Sherry this uh -huh. um, when she was in the other day, but I was talking to a few months ago, uh, it might have been six, it might have been uh, a year ago now, I was talking to um, the lady that runs Crawford Ambulance, and we were mm -hmm. talking about this topic. Mm -hmm. True. And she came to my office and brought me a map that was made in, I don't know when, we don't know who made the map, mm -hmm. but right down Highway 81 and off into the Crofton area, it actually says Yankton County EMS Response District mm -hmm. in Nebraska. So somewhere, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but somewhere in the history, somebody made the decision that we should be sure. running down in there. And I don't know if it was Nebraska that made that decision, or if it was somebody that sat on the council, or, um, you know, yeah. they do have a, a, a historian in sure. that chair, but he's probably not want to tell you how long he's been, sure. been since he's been. I, I guess my, my yeah. only issue is I, I know we got to help our neighbors out, and I don't see an issue with that, but. What I do have an issue with is us providing services, you know, out of state. And if we're going to do that, I would like to see some type of agreement with Cedar County, Nebraska, or whatever county we're doing that, because you know we are expending Yankton County citizens, taxpayers, to go across the bridge and help out our neighbors, which is the right thing to do. But I think we to protect ourselves, we should probably have some sort of an agreement on paper, you know, well, if we're going to do that. And just for clarification, yeah. my clarification, yeah. see, so I can answer sure. right. Are you looking at just a liability or you're looking at a financial? Well, I, I guess if, if, some kind? if we're providing out of state services and expending the citizens of Yankton's tax dollars, I, I think there should be some type of agreement because we're regularly going across state lines you know what if you know is our insurance valid i'm sure it is right. but i mean it'd be nice to have some sort of agreement with cedar county nebraska and and that county doesn't have to 
you know, have as big of an ambulance system if we're going to expend our tax dollars there. You, I'm fine with us doing it. I just would like to have asking some sort of, about, I just, yeah. I'm just are you yeah. asking about financial reimbursement from, well, the, from the counties, the Yankee County? I, I because think we that do might charge, yeah. you know, that we yeah. only had six, if you look, sure. we only had sure. six scene, uh, scene responses sure. there in the, you know, um, and those patients were charged. Yeah. And then we did six intercepts, meaning that we, re we responded out okay. and rendezvoused with the basic life support ambulance that yeah. are dropped in or Partington yeah. and transported, and then we charged for that as well. So yeah. that's, I don't have a problem. I'm just trying to figure out if you're looking at something, trying to do some financing and have them <coughs> give us money, I think that's uh, outside my wheelhouse, and that's yeah. got to be a commissioner to commissioner kind of discussion. Well, um, what is if you want yeah. just an agreement, which we are. Um, working on an agreement, a mutual aid agreement uh, mm -hmm. between the state of South Dakota and the state of Nebraska, um, and that basically yeah. has to do with workman's comp stuff. Yeah, I, I think so we, it I, should I probably don't, start. I don't know how the rest of the board feels. You know, I'm I'm fine with us continuing to do it, helping out our neighbors, but I, I just want to make sure we're covered. <coughs> you know, it, going into Nebraska and do it. We we certainly don't want to get to the point where we're doing it. You know, so often that. It's it's costing a large amount to Yankton. I mean, we, we don't want to get in that situation. You're looking at covered financially. Well, covered financially and, and some sort of agreement. It just makes sense. You know, I don't I don't know what Cedar County has for Nebraska uh, ambulance. I'm sure it's probably volunteer or something along mm -hmm. those lines. Mm -hmm. But as we get as a bigger population keeps growing and they have a very large campground just across the river, these calls are going to keep going up. And it's 12 this year. You know, what if it's 50 next year um, and each each call, I don't, you know, we're averaging $500 a call. Some of them like these ALS emergencies are, or non-emergencies are $2,000 a call. So, I mean, I don't know what, what all these are, but I mean, it could be thousands of dollars potentially. And, you know, we want to make sure they're covered, but I think we need to cover ourselves as well. Other points you want to cover tonight? How is the new billing going? Oh, very well. Very well. It's going Glad very well. Yes. Okay. Um, um, it, as any transition mm -hmm. takes place, it took a little while to kind sure. of get the wheels moving. The wheels are moving really well now, and, and okay. it's, uh, uh, I think that we're we're going to start seeing some of that benefit, that reaping that benefit from from that. Um, that change. Okay. So it says in here that the fees collected were 747919 Was yeah. that for the year 2020 or is that year 2020 and further back? No, it was for uh, just, well, that was the money that we collected in calendar year mm -hmm. uh, 2020, but it doesn't okay. mean that some of that okay. money collected wasn't from, you okay. know, uh, January 2019 sure. because of the way the insurance so what rate are we now at for collecting? I mean, what percent of our, our bills end up getting, what we're getting paid for? Is it still, are we still having quite a few that, that are we're getting that are stiffed on? In, in yeah. the private bill? Well, I would say that we yeah. cut that privately. I, I believe mm -hmm. a year ago, and I meant to look before I came um, all day today, I could say I'm going to look before I come, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and I'm, I'm sure none of you have thoughts like that. But, um, <laughs> Um, I believe we were right around that two hundred thousand dollar mark in private pays a year ago. Okay. Um, in two thousand, in the end of two thousand eighteen, beginning of two thousand nineteen, now we're at about a hundred thousand. And so um, we have looked. Um, uh, QMC and I uh, have looked into why we have such a you know, and we I think our private pay is eleven or sixteen percent of our calls, and so we try mm -hmm. to look into into that and. Okay. and um, I'm not that QMC had a lot of input there, but I did make some phone calls and did a little bit of research. And we do have kind of a high uninsured population within our community. Um, the hospital sees that as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Looks like we're, we're still doing a lot of calls to Irene, um, mm -hmm. the city Irene. Um, 
do we have an agreement with the, no. that city or no. are most of them to the assisted living home up there or what would you yes. say? I would, okay. Well, yes. Okay. About half of the city, we look at the number here. I would say about um, half of the 25 would be in okay. assisted living, yes. And what type of calls are those? Are those like uh, just... You mean at assisted to, living or just yeah, in, in well, Irene as well? To the, to, you know, I, the city of Irene, are, are they non-emergency or what, what type of code? Well, most of the time they're in, in an emergency type okay. response, yes. Are they like ALS emergency or um, BLS emergency? I'd have to look, but let's okay. say they do for, let's say 60%. Okay. You know, and that that's something maybe we need to look at and some sort of an agreement with them too. You know, again, I think it's the right thing to help our neighbors out. But if we have 25 calls and they're say they're ALS emergency and it's we're averaging over a thousand dollars a call, you know, our cost to the Yankton County taxpayers is 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 spending twenty five thousand dollars outside of Yankton County mm -hmm. and you know maybe that's something that our neighbors could help us out with too so I guess if you while you're working on an agreement with Nebraska I but think it I, would be worth and I, I think to Steve's point mm -hmm. is that part of the discussion needs to come from a commissioner mm -hmm. is the agreement between a county and a city yeah. and a county and another county or city yeah. in Nebraska I think he's willing to work on the liability, the workman's comp, and in okay. that type of stuff. But to have that conversation is probably a commissioner calling. Yeah. Well, I think that it's something we should look into. I definitely feel, yeah, help our neighbors out. But I mean, are you are you willing to get? Of, are you willing to make those calls? You are the ambulance liaison. That, that does that not comes, mean that I make that, all the calls. That comes with the territory. So well. Um, if, I, if I you think, would like to push that, I would I encourage think, you to make those I calls. I think the citizens of, of Yankton County, you know, should, should know that we are potentially spending tens of thousands of dollars outside of Yankton County. And I, I don't have a problem with that, but I think an agreement with our neighboring counties would be warranted. And I would encourage you to start that conversation. Just out of curiosity of the 15 calls that are for out of county or for meet and transfer, how many of those are not covered by insurance? Any guesstimate? I give you this one stare because that's a really good question that I don't have an answer to, but I can find that, I can get that answer. Because, let's just say, let's because get we might be talking right. about nothing here because it could be that insurance has paid all of those 15 would, would, or would. insurance might have only not paid one. So we could be wasting a lot of time I would say discussing a boot point. The calls that are coming from the from the um, uh, assisted living or the, the, the Sunset Manor, they're going to come. They're, they're covered by Medicare, Medicaid, yep. private insurance. So yep. Those are going to be covered by some type of insurance. Um, the do you get a lot of calls? A, number, a, a handful of the calls, one or two of the calls that were within. Uh, Within there, we're, we're within the city limits, I believe we're seeing those single point of vehicle accidents. So you have that. Then the, the other ones, I'd have to go back and actually look to see what, if it was, you know, how, what that insurance. But I, I see where you're going. That's a really good point. And, and how many calls have you gotten from these campgrounds? Have you gotten any from the campgrounds? Yeah, we have a couple from the campgrounds. Over, over the years, we'll have some. I, I'd have to go back and, and actually look. You know, but would it be fair that it's not many? No, it, yeah, that's correct. Any other questions for Steve on his either his quarterly or his billing update? Move approval of the ambulance quarterly report. Second. I have a motion by Healy, second by Fox to approve the ambulance quarterly reports for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Thank you very Thanks, much. Steve. Thanks, Steve. We're not too far off. Mr. Salachik. We have three items under item 13, appoint highway superintendent and that is I didn't skip anything, did I? Oh, okay. 
I, I thought you're it. I was skipping something again. Um, no, because my- every two years, state law requires us to reappoint our highway superintendent. And Mike's been on the job for two years now. Um, so it's time to reappoint him. We also have spring load limits and bids to cover. So let's take the appointment first. So in essence, we just need to reappoint I'll him as highway superintendent. I'll second that motion. So motion by Kettering, second by Clemish to reappoint Mike Slotchik as our highway superintendent for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Welcome back aboard. Thank you. You're stuck again. I, I guess we should have probably asked if he wanted to be reappointed before we did it. But. Too late. <laughs> Don't ask. Man. So you are on for spring spring load limits. That time of year again. Um, got uh, last year's uh, resolution there, and then also uh, talk with a little bit on this uh, with Eastside Drive, possibly lifting the load rating on that uh, or spring load limit on that. Um, since we did get that agribusiness grant, uh, there any questions on either one of them? So you need us to approve one of them. One or the other tonight. And we would still do. Uh, we still have the. Permit process for for during spring load limits for the non divisible loads for the non divisible loads yes. What do you recommend out of these two resolutions, Mike? Well, it's uh, it's kind of an iffy deal as long as we can do East Side Drive within uh, 22 or 23. I, I don't see a problem with pulling the spring load limit. Uh, it does worry me that there will be some some blowouts on it, but uh, you know, um, I think we can work through it. Do you think it would be better to keep it at seven ton this year, or not? I mean, that's I'm going to weigh you're, in you're here the, just for a second because we part of that resolution that we passed was that we would remove spring load limits on them, um, assuming this project is gonna go through. And then they also do owe us a deposit on that to ensure that. Have we, have we got the deposit? And, and no, uh, Gary and I met last week with them. Um, I'll read this email we got back. So well, how I left it with them is, it's probably going to be one of two ways. It's either going to be passed tonight with load limits on there, and when we receive the check, we'll have to pass resolution to take them off, or we can approve it tonight uh, without the load limits. Um, if the money doesn't show up by the time they go on, we would have to put them on. But so this is the response. Um, our executive board does not meet until March 11th, um, at which time we'll have approval to issue the check. We will then have it, it have it issued uh, by March 15th. If you have any questions, reach out. Because he had, he, they had expressed that they, you know, had talked to their team about that, but um, I think there was miscommunication the expectation from them was that the check is would be there before load limits, not before we passed a resolution in January. It was kind of the. When, do, when did they go on last year? Load limits. March. So yeah, March, I want to say it'll be bumping up to it. That March fifteenth, we'll be bumping up to it. It all depends on. When frost starts going out, you know, there's yeah. been times where we put them on in February and mm-hmm. they didn't come off until yep. April. Mm-hmm. But the six the six hundred thousand grant got approved, so we are good for that, and we do have a plan for that road. 
we don't know for sure though if that project is moving forward we hope that it is we, we all we all want that to happen i guess my concern is if we take these load limits off this road tonight and that project doesn't happen there is a potential for some significant damage on that road well, during load limits in defense of that yeah. either way we, we got granted the 600,000 mm -hmm. okay um, i think that looked I'm okay. saying anything bad sure. here, but I think it looked foolish if, if we didn't mm -hmm. follow through and get anything with that money and return it. Mm -hmm. Why would they ever give it to us again? Sure. They wouldn't. So we, we have that money regardless of if that project goes through or not. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I guess I have a hard time believing, though, if, if uh, the organization uh, that wants the road put in there is waiting on a, a meeting scheduled for the middle of March couldn't have an executive call and get it approved like 15 minutes ago if they really wanted the damn road. So did, did we approve that in July? When was that? July or something or August? When did we approve that resolution? It would have been last spring sometime, I want to say. Wasn't it? I mean, in yeah, middle summer. I, think. I, I guess, you know, it's been that long and I, I don't, I guess I don't understand, but I'm I'm indifferent. Yeah, it's 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 a great thing for economic development and the and the county and, and the agricultural sector will benefit from it. So work it out, get it done. So you had mentioned putting maybe a um an adder on the motion, essentially. If we go ahead and approve the resolution to lift the load limits, can we approve that resolution? Um, and say uh, load limits will not be lifted if if the check's not in the bank by the date we lift them. Sure. I didn't say it as eloquently as you did. My my thought is if we if that's the route we'd go, we would just approve it with load limits removed, um, and we'd have to monitor it. We have some meetings that we need to get together on, and Gary, then always and we need to get Mike involved. And then pass a second resolution would, if it doesn't happen. If, yep, if. So that shows good faith on our part. Right. And if in the end you don't come through, our good faith is gone. Right. I'm calm, And I I'm can agree with that. With that. I, I believe the intention is to follow through on the project. So. Okay. This, this resolution, I do have to send it into the state by the end of the week. Right. And the resolution number is 21-1. So whoever makes a motion, that is the resolution number is 21-1. I'll make that motion. To approve it without the load limits on East Side Drive. Okay, so which, which one was that? The first one? the first one the first one yep so the first page in your packet is the one don is proposing that we approve do i have a second i'll second so i have a motion by kettering second by fox to approve resolution 21-1 for load limits okay. yep legal further discussion All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Resolution 21-1. Do you want me to write that in there? I'll type it in. Oh, you'll type it in. Okay. Type the names. We made okay. the motion. And just to clarify, that's six tons per an axle on all roads, excluding uh, north of Westerville on 430 Avenue, 46. Seven ton per next on 450 Avenue to height of 50. Yes. That's how it was last year. Yep. Yep. And last, uh, <coughs> you guys can make a motion so I can go out for uh, yearly bids for fuel and chip seal. <coughs> make a motion to authorize the highway superintendent to take bids out for fuel what was it 
You can just put yearly for bids. Yearly bids. Yearly bids. Second. I have motion by Clemish, second by Healy to authorize the highway superintendent to go out for yearly bids. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries five zero. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Can you that sign? Yeah, I hope sure. that fits this one. That one just looks uh, set to uh, control. We have a question what? from the audience. One second here. We have a question in the audience. Yes, sir. I'd like to talk a little bit about the low limit deal. Sure, come on up. Cliff Matson, CNC Construction. I was trying to get a request to put a seven ton rather than six ton on one mile of oil road from Highway 81, one mile west, so that we can get in and get out of the the two pits on seventh on road rather than on sixth on road. So that was 304th Street? Yes. Just because of the fact that we, you know, no more than fair if they can go in with rain and come out with rain. Why can't we go in with gravel and come out with gravel? And I'm, I'm not asking just just if we could go to seven ton. Mike, leave already. Nope. Nope. No, there he is. <laughs> I agree with Cliff on that, but this is kind of where we ran into the same problem last year when we decided to go seven ton for an axle for, for these train facilities. We're opening up a can of worms. Um, I, I, I agree with Cliff. It'd be so handy for us to get in and out of that pit, but if we do it there, then we have to do it with a pit like Johnson Bridge. We got to do it on Weavers, uh, Fisher. Where to start this stuff? Mm. So yep. Ultimately, it's your guys' decision on that one. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> And I, I think I remember discussing that pit in general, or specifically, and even with the grain facilities, I think I had though my concerns when we passed those that it was going to go into the gravel and into, you know. There's a burden with a dumb six ton road running two. I mean, especially coming out, that's the only two accessible pits usually in mm -hmm. the spring. Mm -hmm. Like Mike said, it would help the county considerably too coming out of that pit with their trucks if they could come out with seven ton as opposed to six ton. How, how far do you want it uh, from the pit furthest west? Yeah. And then go uh, east, east to 81? The, that's what you want it uh, from the furthest pit and going east to 81? Or which? Yeah, from yeah. our course pit. Yep. Be west of 81. West of 81. Yeah. One, what we need is one mile. One mile. So yeah. His turnoff is at the mile marker. So, so, Mike, help me a little bit here. Uh, don't we offer an option for an annual fee? That's yeah, just for non divisible yeah. loads. Okay. Guess I don't see a issue with it. Other comments? I think what should have maybe been done there and maybe still can is something like what Gromark is doing. And I know last year we raised those to seven tons, but ultimately they want. Uh, you know, and it shouldn't be on the contractors. It's the owner of the pit should bring that road to or have that discussion. I don't know. I, I certainly can can agree with the concern. Um, I, I guess I'm fairly indifferent. I just, we have to make a decision where we start and stop. 
Yeah. You know, can I get it seven ton from my bin site to 46? I'm a mile off. The only difference that I can say on something like that would be it's a single individual versus 20 construction. Right. Buildings. Yeah. So she basically want to go from 439th Avenue East to Highway 81. Yes. Yeah. And that fits a little easier um, mm -hmm. to justify that's a fairly good road and you're a mile off, you know, and it's when you start looking at, well, at some so. of the other locations and yeah. how do you justify it and not play favorites type of deal. So it's, I guess I have a hard time uh, justifying if, if, if we do it for one mile or 15 miles. I'm not sure it makes much difference. Well, it makes a big difference in the damage. But it's the issue of when you make the exception. Yeah, I mean, we have the low limits are there for a reason. And I think if some of the people from LTAP were watching this, they're probably screaming at home that we're even talking about it. Um, last conversation I ever had with them is we should be having six ton period. Uh, but we do have commerce in the, in the county too, so. See if we could get any, something done on it. No, it is what it is and I understand that, so thank you. Thanks Cliff. Thanks Cliff. So, so at this point, do we want to, ch un to change what we just did? Or do we want to leave it as is and have this discussion next year? <laughs> Any comments? Expert, Mike, uh, I'm going to challenge you to Mike, you want to move the mic back to me? There we go. You think this should be done? Well, it's just like I said, where you draw the line. Um, you have Kellen's pit over here on, on County Road 102. Um, I, I don't want to make these guys mad, you know, but I, I it's just like with us, with the county, we have a stockpile at the shop so if something bad does happen and we need gravel we do have it you know we can get out to highway 50. these guys they don't have that option i, I get it but it, where do you guys draw the line it costs one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a mile to fix an asphalt road roughly well it depends on what you do to it yeah, yeah. That, that might be pennies compared to if you got to start all over and we well, had a road you, you know, going we, west of Utica last year or two years ago that we found out what happened. Yeah, you know what we did to the, what was it, uh, 403, uh, the one that goes when we run all the gravel trucks to, to uh, oh, 303. 303. You know what we did to that road and destroyed it. Yeah. Destroyed it. And now it probably costs 150000 a mile instead of maybe an option of 20, 25,000 a mile. Well, the, the damage is going to be the same no matter if you're hauling gravel or something else. It's the weight that does the damage. And we we just took load limits off of one road for a business, and another business owner is asking us to do the same the only, thing. The only the other business. option I could see us doing is just going back to seven ton for an axle on everything like it was three, four years ago. And that's where I think we need, if, if we start doing this, that's where we need to go. That's what you're after, Cliff, right? Seven tons would, would right. that right. make you happy? I, don't, I do not want a, an old hook on the side. I would like to see seven tons. I mean, it's used to, at least it's used to get shot at. But it's old. You know, it's something definitely in the future, if we're gonna, if things keep going the way we are with, you know, if we can stay on top of our chip ceiling and all that stuff, yeah, in the future, I don't see a problem with it. You know. um, 
just the way the roads were or are, you know, it's kind of hard to go back to seven ton, but I, I do see your point. So we've got, as, as I see it right now, we've got two options. We can stay with what we just approved, or we can essentially strike the six ton off that resolution and make it seven. seven and seven. then we only, we have- uh, Or we, we can table it and discuss it next week. But- well, We I don't meet until February. Well, oh, you're talking at one of the special meetings, put it on the agenda first? We could. Because we meet on Friday and we meet on Monday evening. So what's going to change between now and then? Because we all get to sleep on it a little bit. Or, I mean, really serious. It's a serious gonna question. What's going to change in, in, in seven days? We're going to have the same limits. discussion and sit here and not want to make a decision. I would probably need to see studies for it to change would be my guess. For me, I'd need to see studies on that, that damage. You know, contact LTAP. Well, what does real... Yeah, what does LDAP say? What 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 what's there? I think they're going to tell us six ton that it should, these would all be six ton. I think if I remember correctly, last year there it was about fifty fifty. Half the half the counties were six ton, half were seven. There's more sevens than sixes. Are there? That's one thing I can pass on to you guys if you want to see what all the other counties are doing. I think it, last year we looked at the counties surrounding us, and I think most were sixes, with exception maybe was Bonholm seven. Are they six? Bonholm seven. Um, I think if I remember right, uh, Hutchinson and Turner are seven. Clay County is six. So six closer to the river <laughs> downstream. So what do we want to do? we move on as it is and we put it on the we can always repeal that and adopt the new resolution at the next meeting if do you want me to put it on monday's agenda then we can yes. put it on monday's agenda so we'll let the re resolution stand that we approved and we'll uh, consider changes to it next monday okay, okay. all right agenda Thanks, Mike, Mike, will you get uh, some kind of a confirmation on the opinion of LTAP before that meeting? Thanks, Mike. Mr. Hunhoff. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. I was hoping to get my annual report done tonight to go along with the quarterly report, but I'm still <coughs> waiting for some mortality numbers from the State Department of Health. They're always a little slow. Usually it's end of January before I can get those. I guess I could have given you the report except those numbers, but I think those will be kind of interesting to us because our deaths have been going up and I think we all are curious to see how we did in 2020. So here's my quarterly report. And you know, we had a very good uh, quarter. I was comparing it to the quarter in 2019. Fourth quarter in 2019 was a very good busy quarter, but uh, the quarter we just completed was quite a bit busier. I'll just give you some examples. Our, our total cash transactions was up about 300. Uh, death certificates were up about 100 over that quarter. Deeds were up about 69. I'm comparing all of this to the fourth quarter, 2019. Mortgages were up about 130. Satisfactions were up about 120. Our copies revenue was up from uh, 13,800 to 17,270. And county real estate sold was 26.2 million in the fourth quarter of 2019 and 36.8 million for the most recent fourth quarter completed. Total fees collected, uh, fourth quarter of 2019, we collected 76,500. The quarter we just finished, we collected 102,166. So we've been busy, which is the way we like it. 
uh, the annual report that I'll give you perhaps at the next meeting, the next regular meeting, will show that we had quite a year also. And we're only 11 work days into January and we're having a tremendous January. So we're gonna have a record January, I'm sure of it. And I'm talking about the whole history of the office. So 2021 is off to a good start as well. Any questions? Those interest rates low, huh? Yeah, yeah that's part of it. I'm still surprised to see uh, as many deeds as we see coming in because I hear, keep hearing that there are hardly any properties for sale. So I don't know how that works, but uh, like I think the sheriff told me the other day, nine houses for sale in Yankton, something like that. So, but today we did probably a dozen deeds in one day. So of course that's other real estate besides houses, that's mm -hmm. farmland might be. But yeah, the interest rate is certainly driving the largest share of it. Right. If there are no further questions, I'll entertain a motion to approve the Register of Deeds quarterly report. Second. I have a motion by Kettering, second by Fox, to approve the Register of Deeds quarterly report. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Uh, one quick note uh, Sherry stopped at my office about a week ago. To, she mentioned that we don't have a notary in the building right now. So I'm. Uh, working on uh, getting my notary, so we'll have a notary again soon. I ordered my seal, haven't received it yet. So that's, uh, that's it, thank you very much. Thank you okay. for that, yeah. thank you. Brian, too, you know, on that notary, we, if it's not county business, remember we did a $10 right. for non-county. Right, that, that'll go into my monthly deposits. Thank you, sir. Mr. Vetter. Several plats. First plat we have tonight, uh, replat of lots one and two, block two, Pioneer, Pioneer Hills edition, a subdivision of parcel F of the northeast quarter of section 17, township 93 north, range 56 west of the fifth principal meridian, Yankton County, South Dakota, hereafter to be known as lot four, block two, Pioneer Hills edition a subdivision of parcel F of the Northeast quarter of section 17 township 93 North range 56 West of the fifth principal Meridian Yankton County, South Dakota. Uh, this, this plat actually satisf satisfies a, a request earlier by the board of adjustment um, when it was requested to put the two lots together that he owns. So bring it closer to compliance. With approval. Second. I have a motion by Clemish, second by Healy to approve the Pioneer Hills plat. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Next one's a plat of lots three and four, parcel three of Quarry Pines edition in the northwest quarter of the northwest quarter of section 16, township 93 north, range 56 west of the fifth principal meridian, Yankton County, South Dakota. Move approval. Second. We have a motion by Clemish, second by Healy to approve lot three and four of Quarry Pines addition. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. The last one is a plat of lot six, block two, law overlook subdivision in the northeast quarter of section 18, township 93 north range 56 west of the 5th Principal Meridian, Yankton County, South Dakota. Move approval. Second. Motion by Healy, second by Clemish to approve Lot 6, Block 2, Law Overlook. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Platts approved. Premier past 710. We are at item number 16. This is a the second reading for a rezone for Brian and Stephanie Weeman. 
public hearing will be held uh, for this is second reading, Yankton County Commission on Tuesday, January 5th, 2021 and uh, January 19th, 2021, beginning at 7, 10 p.m. in the Yankton County Commission Chambers, 321 West 3rd Street, Yankton County, South Dakota, to consider an application made by Brad and Stephanie Weeman for the purpose of rezoning the following property from a dual zone of Article 11, Lakeside Commercial District, and Article 7, Moderate Density Rural Residential R2, to Article 7, Moderate Density Rural Residential R2. Said property is described as Lot 1A and Lot 3 of Leona's second edition in the northwest quarter of Section 17, Township 93 North, Range 56 West, of the 5th Principal Meridian here and, here and after referred to as Utica South Township, Yankton County, South Dakota, State of South Dakota, E911 address 119, Marina Bluffs Road, Yankton, South Dakota 57078. Uh, public's invited to attend the hearing and present comments and testimony regarding the proposed amendments to Yankton County Ordinance 2020 pertaining to zone rezoning the described property at the conclusion of the hearing, the Yankton County Commission may recommend adoption of Yankton County Ordinance number 21-ZN-01. At this time, would anyone care to make a public comment? There being no public comment, public comment is closed. We'll bring it back to the commissioners for discussion. So in the packet is the review done by the planning sure. commission. Mr. Weeman's here. I don't know if he'd want to say anything. Did you want to add anything from the last time? Okay. <laughs> no, no. Okay. All right. So it, the findings of fact are in our packet from the planning commission. Are there any concerns with the conclusions that were presented? I would move approval of the rezone. Second. I would second on findings of fact. Based off findings of fact. Second. So I have a motion by Healy, a second by Klimish to approve the rezone proposed based on findings of fact from the Planning Commission meeting. Further discussion? Roll call vote. Joe? Yes. Dan? Yes. Wanda? Yes. Don? Yes. Sherry? Yes. Rezone is approved 5 0. So at this time, it has to be advertised in the paper, and Mr. Vetter will. Yes, it will be advertised okay. for the next two Fridays, and then 20 days after that, it would go into effect. All right, sir. Did Gary, you? Gary, while we have you up here, uh, is this a normal process in other counties and it, or is rezoning properties simpler other places? Is that something we should look at or is this, is this a standard? No, procedure? I don't believe it's simpler, but, yeah. but it is uh, probably more standard practice in a lot of counties than, than what's been happening. Uh, but I think uh, when it makes sense down here, I think that's what we're trying to change on some of these where the where the properties are dual zoned especially, or maybe some of the, I know we're gonna be looking at a lot of these RT properties down the line and things, but I think where we have a, a group of homes that are, that are uh, looking to go residential from egg here pretty soon and where it makes sense for small lots and things. And so I think where it makes sense and it's not out in the middle of nowhere and we have a group of homes. I think we'll we'll keep proceeding to try and move those forward to get more into compliance. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. All right, I'm good to go. Thank you for coming. We're at item 17. The sheriff. the auditor's office a hard time you end up lower down <laughs> I figured I'd be here at 10 o'clock tonight so I'm <laughs> um, 
the last quarter of the year and, and for the year, the good news is even with COVID and everything going on, we were still able to generate between the sheriff's fees and jail income a little over a million dollars. Uh, bad news, of course, is we're about $700,000 less than 2019. Uh, any questions on the report? No. No, okay. Uh, one other item I asked to be brought up is the commission has the authority to raise our daily housing rates for other counties, and that would be for those outside of federal contracts. Federal contracts are still in place, so stay whatever those are at. Currently, we're at $70 a day for out-of-county prisoners. I recommend you move that up to 80 uh, to bring us in line with uh, many of the others in the states. A little less than some, a little more than some. Uh, so it's right in the, in the ballpark. So I think that'd be appropriate. We just need a motion to move. So we need two motions. We'll need a motion for the quarterly report and then a motion to change the fee. Mm -hmm. What are we changing the fees to? $80 per day. Move a removal of the quarterly report. Second. I have a motion by Kettering, second by Clemish to approve the sheriff quarterly report. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Reports approved. Make a motion to um, change the daily prisoner fee to $80 a day. What's the current? 70. 70. From 70 to 80. Second. I have a motion by Clemish, second by Healy to increase the uh, jail daily fee from seventy to eighty dollars. For the discussion, Jim, all in favor. Oh, go Jim, ahead, sorry. How, uh, is that something we should be looking at every how many years? Two years, five years, or the, the current rate's been in effect for a few years now, okay. and, and and we should take a look at it. it, it when we start seeing other counties raise, sure. and, you know, and, and, and when our costs start going up, now we know our food service costs mm -hmm. are going to be going okay. up. So and, and that's thank you. Let me take it. Any other questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, veterans. I remember what you said, Jim. <laughs> 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 you made the auditor mad too. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. Uh, the year 2020 uh, took a pretty good hit on our numbers. Um, we we're down 319 contacts from the same period last year. Um, COVID. Um, affected us uh, pretty hard. And it, part of that is, is, is that folks weren't moving around and coming in to, to, to address those um, compensation issues that they normally did last year. Uh, another part of it is that uh, uh, the National Personnel Records Center in St. Louis uh, is running on a skeletal crew and it's hard to get any information out of those guys. And so we've got we've got cases that have been backed up for for at least a year, and uh, and that's kind of discouraging. Um, trips to the VA have been down a bit as well, and we've been, we've uh, taken precautions to make that that uh, drive up to Sioux Falls uh, as safe as possible for uh, anybody that that needs a ride up there. Um, they, we have a protocol where we're sanitizing that van uh, every trip. After it's done, I go th go down there and, and I've got a disinfectant stuff that they that they they use and, and uh, I give it a very liberal dose of of that stuff to make sure that nobody's going to get sick from a, from a, you know taking a ride up to the VA. Um, as far as news with the VA, there's a House Resolution 7105 for our Vietnam era vets. Uh, that 
that resolution has not been enacted yet, but that resolution uh, adds three more diseases onto the presum presumption list from Agent Orange exposure. And that is Parkin Parkinsonisms, not Parkinson's itself, but several different Parkins Parkinson-like uh, symptoms are, are going to be covered with, with this House Resolution 7105, as well as bladder cancer and hypothyroidism. So um, if anybody is in the, in the county audience, uh, if they've had those problems, they were uh, boots on the ground in Vietnam or with the, the Blue Water Navy guys, if you have issues with that, you might want to come on in and, and have, a, have a talk with me and we can, um, you know, try to make some plans on how to, uh, how to appeal uh, a rejection from the, from the VA uh, narrative that you, you had already received. Um, there, another part of this House Resolution 7105, if I remember right, it's got a clause where uh, the VA is going to uh, make sure that there are, there are um, qualified uh, lady examiners when it comes to MST, military sexual trauma. And uh, this is something in the works uh, here in Yankton County. If I am uh, contacted by a lady veteran who uh, suggests that she has an MST issue, I let them know that we have a lady uh, VSO over in uh, Union County. We used to have one in Clay, but Sue Irons is the VSO in, uh, in uh, Lincoln and in Union County, and I, I generally send people to her. She does a very good job. Um, I can imagine that a lady veteran coming into my office and seeing some guy that's six two and about two hundred and forty pounds, uh, she's not going to want to talk to him. So, um, if there's any any suggestion at all that that she's got she's got that kind of a problem, I just say, let you know, you can talk to a lady VSO if you want to, and that might be something that some of our lady vets in the county might want to might want to know. Um, or any other questions? Pretty simple. I mean, I, I'd just like to make a comment. Uh, <clears throat> this week, this week, I was sitting at a Vietnam veterans uh, dining room table. His wife brought the mail in, and one of the mail items was a, a letter from the VA department. And there were some very disparaging comments made about the service that this vet was getting from VA. And I said, well, have, have, have you talked to Mr. McDonald? And he said, oh, it's not him. He's doing a great job. He helps us with everything, but they never, they never, they never answer. It's months and months and months and I never get an answer. They were really discouraged. And I think, I think if, uh, if that's a, a problem that's universal across the state, uh, there should be some kind of notice made so that our citizens know that I, I, the veterans are not being serviced at the state and federal level. It, is, it has been tough this last year because from the, from the time I've been doing this now, seven years, uh, January 6th, I've got seven full years in. And, uh, and for, I would say, years two, three, four, and five, we were, we were going gangbusters and, and, and really helping some people. Last year, we, we did pretty good. But at the very end of last year, you could see, you could see things turning down. Well, and this, and this guy has been given, given because he had the Agent Orange mm -hmm. thing, and he's been given uh, less than a year and a half to live. Yeah, I know. And he spends a whole year and a half waiting for the feds to get their act together. It'll be a tough year and a half for him. I have 
tried to light fires under uh, yeah, somebody I mean, behind as much he, as I can. He, he but was, he was totally, totally endorsing what's been done in your office. He, so he thought you'd done a great job. Well, I can try to um, pass that information on to the secretary of the South Dakota Department of Veterans Affairs, and maybe he can get a little bit more tuned into into uh, being proactive and being more of a being more of a a advocate for us. Um, it's 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 a hard job to do, uh, and I and I think the guys that. I still remember Frank Breno doing this, and and when Frank got a hold of you with his with his bad arm, you knew you were in trouble. <laughs> and and he he got stuff done, and he shamed people into doing it, and that's that's not what's what should be doing it should be going on. It, it, we just have to be more proactive. So um, I I know what you're I know what you're saying. And uh, I'll do the best I can, you know. I know I know you will, and I know he will. He knows that you will. So. Any other questions? I would entertain a motion to approve the VSO quarterly report. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Kettering, second by Fox, to approve the Veterans Service Office quarterly report. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Mac. Item 19, tax deed property. Tamara Lee? Oh, she's online, okay. Tamara, can you hear us? Tamara, sorry. I know a Tamara. Ma'am, can you hear us? Residential from egg here pretty soon and where it makes sense for small lots and things. And so I think where it makes sense and it's not out in the middle of nowhere. And that sounds like a delay. I've got a disinfectant stuff that they, that they, they use and, and uh, can hear us. give it a very liberal dose of, of that stuff to make sure that nobody's going to get sick from, from what, you know, taking a ride at the VA. So you, ma'am, you can hear us, but we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah, there we can we hear you now. Thank you. Oh, you bet. No, the the setting defaulted on the wrong one. So sorry about that. No, you're good. You're good. You're on the agenda. Would you like to go ahead and, and take the floor and explain what you're requesting tonight? Yes, thank you very much. Um, so as you know, my name's Tamara Lee. I am the attorney for the town of Gayville. And I do also have here with me Jay Jorgensen, who is the president of the Board of Trustees for the Town of Gayville. And um, we're here just to discuss with you briefly a property that sits in the town of Gayville, and it's located at 500 Merchant Street. Um, this is a piece of property that has, for all practical purposes, been abandoned. Uh, the people that own it live out in California and the town has sent correspondence to them trying to work with the owners many times but never get a response. And the town has over, um, now has over $11,000 in special assessments against this property and is now ready to proceed with legal action to get something done here. And so I've contacted the treasurer's office and spoken with Patty in there who handles tax deeds. And the owners also are behind in taxes to Yankton County um, by at least five or six years that I can see and maybe more. Um, so Patty has advised me that she is 
planning to proceed forward with a tax deed. She already has a tax certificate on the property. Um, and when I asked her, she said, yes, she is willing to work with the town um, as, you know, as long as the state's attorney and the board, the commission board were willing to. So, so just so you know, I've also spoken with Mr. Plimish, Mr. Rob Plimish, the state's attorney. He too is willing to work with the town. And so that's why we're here tonight is we want to ask the board if you are willing to work with us on this property so that the town of Gayville does not lose out on the $11,000 worth of special assessments it has against it. Um, as a town, we have a vested interest in wanting to maintain this property correctly, make sure it looks good. If it needs to be torn down, it needs to be torn down. If it can be salvaged and um, fixed up, you know, the town just wants it to look nice and does not want to lose out on what it has invested in it so far. So that is the purpose of our being here tonight, to ask the commission if you're willing to work with us on this property so we don't lose what we have invested in it. Ma'am, this is Commissioner Clemish. Is the intent to, to redevelop that property, or is it, or is it the intent to demolish it and leave it as a green space? You know, we don't know at this point. Um, Mr. Jorgensen, the president of the town um, board of trustees, did drop off some photos today. I don't know if you've seen those. But it shows the condition of the house. And if you have that in front of you, you can see it's starting to look a little dilapidated. Uh, one of the windows on the second floor there has been open for a while. And the cellar door is now open after these recent strong winds. So the town really doesn't know what's inside and what they're going to get into. Um, in addition to that, it's apparently turned into a party house for the local teenagers. So it could look pretty bad inside. So the town really doesn't know if it's can be salvaged or if it's got to be demolished. And at that point, I think after the board figures out what they do with it or what needs to be done with it, I think they would probably put it up for sale. And if, you know, a real estate person could come in and fix it up, that's fine and great. If they want to, if it needs to be taken down and turned into green space, you know, it would probably be sold as a lot. So someone else could put a residence there. Any questions? Ms. Lee, this is Commissioner Fox. Um, is the town inclined to pay the, the back taxes? Yeah, there's not been a resolution to that effect yet, and we would like to know what the total amount is. Do you have that in front of you or not? Is that the 4,000? It's $4,184.67. And I'm assuming that includes back taxes and penalties and interest. Okay. So I can't speak on behalf of the board, but I believe, you know, they would address that at this up their next upcoming meeting in February and probably would be inclined to pay that in order to save themselves the 11,000 that they have invested in it so far. Any other questions? Now, uh, similar um, to what we did in Utica, I mean, are you are you asking us to to drop the fees, or do you want us when we collect this house via um, delinquent taxes to to give it to the town of Gayville? That would be great. I mean, that if we've you... done that with the the town of of Utica on those, but I mean, it is quite a process that takes that, years to that do. That property in Utica was already taxed. Okay. We already the owned it. Right. Okay. That was. Yeah. I guess from the from this is Commissioner Healy. From my standpoint, I think generically, yes, we're willing to work with you. What that looks like maybe remains to be seen, and maybe we need to, um, you know, put some proposals yeah. together and look at timelines of what's happening. And but uh, I have no interest in the county owning any property my only concern is i'm willing to work with you but i would like this house either rehabilitated if possible or um 
or a new house placed on there because it, it doesn't do anybody any good to have another vacant lot in these small towns. So if we do do this, I'd like some sort of condition that it's redeveloped in three years or something. And we did that with the, that one property in Utica. Uh, that would be the only thing I would like to stipulate because, you know, just another empty lot doesn't make a lot of sense to me, so. And I believe, just to respond to that, that um, my town board in Gayville is very much supportive of that. That is their plan too, is that it's not just a green space that sits there. They would like to have the taxes and you know what they get off of that and to just keep promoting the town and having people come in and have it look nice. So exactly. um, they're progressive in that sense that they want their town to continue to look nice and look good and serve the people. So I don't think that would be a problem at all. So are, are you looking for a motion for us or were you just kind of interested in what our thoughts were or what? I, I, we can't make a motion on anything tonight. You, you just kind of wanted to know if you were, we were willing to work with you basically? Yeah, that's my question at this point is I just wanted to make you guys aware of it and then see if you're favorable to work with the town so that the town does not lose out on what it has invested in that property and and can you know like i said they have a vested property or vested interest in just keeping it looking nice in the whole town so that's our desire to have that commitment from the commission tonight okay. All right. any other comments all right your your continued point person is probably patty vavra on this and then the state's attorney's office because there's a lot of legal stuff that has to happen um, so I'd encourage you to stay in contact with them and they'll keep us up to date at where this is at. Yes, that sounds fine. Thank you. I appreciate your willingness to work with us and I appreciate your time. If you have anything, Deb, you can contact me. I, I would volunteer to kind of take okay, that'd the be great. onto this project. So it. Okay, so uh, Joe Healy has volunteered to be in on, on that circle. Okay, great. That sounds great. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Yeah, I'll let I'll let Rob know. I know he had talked to her, so. Okay. Thank you. So we are at item 20, public comments. Any public comments? All right, thank you. No public comments. Comments are closed. None. And commissioner updates. I have probably what, three. Uh, <clears throat> today I met with uh, Rob Flemish and, and uh, three uh, of the uh, employees of the Boys and Girls Club and we discussed the JDI ju juvenile detention uh, program that, that, that we briefly talked about before and uh, there's, <clears throat> it needs to be moved along because it's a grant that had run the program for three or four years. And I think the grant has to be in sometime in March or April. And so we're getting down to 45 days from when we need to get it in. Uh, we, we plan to, the group that was here today plans to meet again with a larger group uh, that have been uh, meeting uh, on this issue uh, from uh, Rob's uh, area of influence. And uh, we'll probably come to a, with a proposal uh, on the second meeting in, in February. Any questions on that? I attended the YAPG meeting uh, today. Uh, most of that meeting was a discussion of the merger of uh, YAPG and, and uh, the uh, county chamber. chamber. And what? <laughs> and the chamber. Don, Don is the visitor bureau or tourism, is that? I think it'll all, it all, be, in, uh, all, all, all be included, that, that, that's under the chamber. Mm -hmm. And it looks, uh, it looks to me like, uh, uh, it's probably moving towards towards a merger. Uh, they're in the process of getting both boards to 
uh, meet and agree on the final uh, documentation of how it work and who's responsible. And uh, I met yesterday uh, with uh, District 3. Uh, uh, I had called District 3 and requested uh, what, if any, help they could lend us uh, on the a reconstruction uh, of the comprehensive plan in Article 5. And uh, uh, Brian uh, uh, McGinnis uh, will provide copies of zoning ordinances from other counties uh, with larger first class communities. And he will tab uh, or otherwise mark up the appropriate sections that have some bearing on livestock zoning. So that should help us with Article 5. Uh, Eric Ambroso will review uh, our existing draft comprehensive plan and note statistics, maps, and other data analysis sections that can be easily updated. So he'll, he'll do that. That's needed for the comprehensive plan. Uh, Greg will review the draft comprehensive plan consideration sections, which includes policy recommendations. Uh, he will note the issues or conditions that probably should be included based upon current events. And we're not prepared to make a new policy recommendation outside of obvious facts that are supported by acceptable data sources. Uh, he says he knows that Yankton County has issues to debate which are contentious uh, and they intend to stay out of the internal policy discussions. Uh, their proposed work activities may not involve enough staff time to justify a fee for the service, but if additional updates take more than 40 hours of staff time, uh, he feels justified in charging Yankee County up to $2,500 for additional time based on our fee for service hourly rates. They're not proposing to work with the planning commission or attend planning commission meetings. Uh, they're intending to assist our staff and provide direct information to the county commission. Also, uh, they cannot guarantee uh, the June uh, 1, 2021 deadline for full completion of the plan or zoning revisions. And I'd suggested that we would really like to have this wrapped up by the 1st of June or to have it to the point that we could present it to the public. Uh, although we do not anticipate any problems in accomplishing our, our tasks, we cannot uh, control or manage the work of county personnel. Uh, the revision approval and or adoption process needs to be conducted by county staff. Uh, he said if we're, if we're comfortable with the pros scope of the work, and the conditions uh, associated with them. He will put together a work order. Uh, we will get moving on the assignment as soon as possible. Uh, he will ask for direction by submitting work products. We can drop the, them off at the county government center to provide them directly to you, to us. Uh, and he says he's looking forward to assisting us in the project. Uh, To me, uh, the comprehensive plan uh, needs to work, uh, be adjusted along with Article 5, because the comprehensive plan uh, identifies uh, many of the conditions and circumstances in the county that, that can affect uh, Article 5 and other sections. So I think we need to do both of those as we go along. And. Uh, the meetings that we're having Friday and Monday or whenever it's scheduled uh, are a step in that uh, direction. But then I think uh, uh, a lot of work uh, will probably come back uh, to Gary and the Planning and Zoning Board uh, to start meeting fairly regularly uh, to work through this. Gary's provided me with a copy of all the work that Pat completed uh, on the comprehensive plan uh, prior to his leaving uh, in 18 or whenever it was. And uh, I think we 
we have a good start on that. And if they provide us all the data sheets, it shouldn't be a gigantic problem to do the comprehensive plan. So that's where we're at uh, so far. Uh, I guess uh, my question to the commission is to think about District 3's proposal and we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting uh, to bring up and discuss and, and I we probably need to vote on that, I guess. And uh, yeah. so uh, we want to get it done. We need we need we need to take some major steps in that direction. Any, any questions? Are you proposing we do the comprehensive plan first? No, I think it, they else? both can be worked on. Gary, do you agree? We can work on both of them. There's there's a lot of the comprehensive plan that uh, as it exists that nobody's going to argue about. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's it's a you know some of, some of the documents I think he had 11, 11 county plans uh, in front of us uh, from across the state or in front of me from across the state mm -hmm. and some of them were an inch and a half thick and some of them were an inch thick but all of them contain a lot of data that's Kind of uh, well, useless. When, when you and I worked on the comprehensive plan, what was that 2015 or something? Most of that, you know, I'd like to see some sort of an executive summary. We've talked where, about that. Where uh, we basically have each each one of the districts and the purpose of it, and then all the statistics that they could go in the in the back or something else. So, and, and, you know. and Gary's Gary's uh, doing some ex exploration. I think one county has done kind of an executive plan uh, but it's not it's not a common practice because a lot of it has to be detailed mm -hmm. to the point when somebody it, it, it actually has to tell you what it is Gary yeah that is correct um, the standard for a lot of counties is that they do an executive summary to their to their comprehensive plan. But uh, Lawrence County that that he's talking about just recently actually came down to a 41 page comprehensive plan uh, that they finalized in this just in December, which was kind of interesting. So. It's worth looking at just to see what you think about it, but um, but yeah, generally it's just a summary to the existing plan. Okay. I'll get it on we're, the agenda. We're moving, put it on the agenda, yep. and uh, want everybody's help. We're, we're gonna, we haven't decided on how we're gonna get outside input. We've, got, we've done that a couple of times in the last two years. I think we still need to address that so that people have a chance to input before it's written and then a, a thorough review when it's done. Okay, thank you. Any other updates? No. We have a meeting on Friday at nine to discuss insurance, liability insurance. And I believe everyone was sent out some documents in their email on that. And then next Monday at 6 p.m., we have our first special meeting for Article 5. So we can um, start talking high-level discussion there. And then we also scheduled a meeting just like it Friday, February 5th at 9 a.m. So those are the special meetings that I have um, so far coming up. Sure. Seven on Monday. Six. Six, Six o'clock on Monday. And um, we're probably all wondering what those meetings are going to be about. Uh, I guess how I envision those meetings going is to start looking at um, a general direction of what we want Article 5 to look like, look like. And there's a lot of very high button issues in that article 
and lot size is one of them and setbacks is the other. And I think a lot of the other things in that article are probably not as controversial as those two. And really setting a plan for how we want to tackle, taking input from the public, comparing it to other counties and where we want to end up at the end. That's how I envision those meetings going and I would like to have the public's participation. That's their opportunity to come to the microphone, have their three minutes to say, this is my priority for Article 5. Do we have any, any other vision for those two meetings? Because we have to start somewhere. Uh, I think that's a perfect start. You know, we have a current ordinance. We have um, a, a modification, I want to say a reorganization of the ordinance itself that makes it flow a little, in my opinion, better. Again, that's my opinion. Um, so people understand exactly what the expectation is. And Joe has said it before, when you come in, this is my expectation, this is what I go through, and I have a high confidence of the outcome. And I, I think we need to achieve that. Any other comments about those two meetings? Okay, with that, that is the last item was commissioner updates, items for next meeting. So uh, next Monday, even though it's a special meeting for article five, we need to get Mike on the agenda for load limits. And on that agenda, I think we need to discuss District 3's participation as Don outlined tonight. So those are the two items on next Monday's meeting. As far as Friday, it's just um, uh, insurance, but anything for the first meeting in February? Not yet. All right. Can you send that proposal before the meeting, Don? District 3's? Do they have it typed up? Yeah, I read it. Okay. That or you can get it to Gary Vetter and Gary can forward as well too. You might even have a copy. Sure hard to handle paper without being able to lick your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> when you're old anyway. Okay. So if there's no other business, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. <laughs> Do I have a second to adjourn? <laughs> motion by Healy, a second by Kettering to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0.